But God's word shows us that if you will pray, look at what the word says. Moses said, Lord, respect not their offerings. The Bible says over in Hebrews that some people got to give an answer for you and they give it to God in, in, in a disheartening way. Now, you don't want Moses or Aaron to be praying to the Lord. Tommy is just acting a fool. Y'all think like, well, you can't, God ain't going to, God be like, I placed you over that. That's why you need to know your prayer. Your, 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 your father and you got kids in your house. And the belt don't work all the time. You go before God. God, Junior is acting a fool. Because God respects authority Amen. and appointment. You better not get your preacher praying about you because you disruptive. Y'all act like God would say, you, 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 you can't say nothing. That's why he put you there, to watch. Amen. We're watchmen. If you're in ministry, you're a watchman. You're supposed to see stuff. And you're supposed to interpret stuff. And if you see the trends, you're supposed to... He said he had some people, they were like dumb dogs. They would not bark. You got a watchdog and we come in and take all your big screens. What you need him for? You should bark at least. Stay with me. Don't go to sleep. I'm, I'm going around the corner. So Moses, verse 16, said unto Korah, be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. And he told them to take those censers in verse number 17. Verse 18, and they took every man a censer and put fire in them. In other words, they took their position and their anointing. See, I'm preaching this because God is speaking to people, his people, his sheep, gather back together. Be believers again, gathering together. Gather together. You are not that anointed to do this on your own. I don't care if you grew up in church now and you're still grieving behind the loss of a husband, loss of a child. Amen. You can't do that forever. You need to gather. God, out of that grief, can minister to others. If everybody that got wounded in the house of the Lord ran home, there would be nobody in the house. But you're supposed to be able to go through, forgive those who offended you, Get over it so that you can offer consolation to others when they come in who are coming into the kingdom. Everybody can't run to his own house and just be licking their wounds. How they hurt me and they don't love me over there and they don't respect me. That's what Cora them was doing. And so Moses said, stop that. Verse 19, and Cora gathered all the congregation against them to the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. So he took more than 250 people. He took all the people. Because once people start complaining, criticizing, bickering, it gets through the whole church. Bad spirit. Old nasty spirit. People can feel it. And the way to deal with it ain't to not talk about it. It's to hear what God's word says about it so we can see how God feels about it. And if we are the offender or the offendee or however, we change. Because it ain't nothing but the work of darkness. So he got all the congregation now. Some go down with two people in the church. Now everybody got to pick sides. A lot of it ain't nobody's business. Amen. Amen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, verse 20, and said unto Aaron, Separate yourself from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. I'm going to tell you something. God don't like no mess. God don't like ugly. And when it comes to his church and your family, God means business about that. God means business about your family. He wants it to have order. And he means business about his church. He wants it to have order. And when there's disorder, God tells the man, you better hope you got a wife that'll pray for you when you out in them streets clowning, chasing them tricks and doing all that. You better hope you got a husband that loves God and will wait on you to get done with your silly self. Because you better hope you got a pastor that will not just forget about you but will pray. Because God said, I don't like this step away so I can get them. 
Now, we didn't say, oh, he don't do that no more. God don't change. When it comes to his business, he said, what God have joined together, let not man put asunder. If somebody do touch it, they better hurry up and stop touching it. Because ask Abraham and Sarah. God, when Abraham lied to say, that's my sister, God was like, wait a minute, I don't play. Somebody better change up in here. Because I'll tear this place up. And by that, he means I will deal with some people. And when God deals with you, he deals with you with his word. Or the word won't come to you when the enemy come in like a flood. You can't lift up a standard against him. You'll be, you, boy, you better hear me. Because God don't play. He bringing us back to the days of the early church. When you lie about your giving, you lie about the drop dead. Y'all don't want to have church. Ananias and Sapphira was up there. I'm bringing it all up here, Peter. I, it's all right here, yeah. And he said, why do you lie to the Holy Ghost? She fell dead. They took her and buried her. And they kept on, Jesus, I'll never forget what you done for me. <coughs> the husband first. Then the wife come in. Hey, he said, what y'all do with the money? You know, you say you were going to do something. Said, you said it. What you do with it? Uh, well, we, we, we did it all like we're supposed to. Count it. Preacher counted. He said, you lying just like your husband. She fell dead. They took her back behind the church. Jesus, I'll never forget what you done for me. They didn't cry about it. Because God didn't want people deceiving in his church. Oh, lift your hand here. If you give me about five more minutes, I think I'll be out of here. This is the word of the Lord. So the Lord told Moses did. Separate themselves from the congregation. Ooh, this is too rich for me. This is just too rich. There comes times, children of God, when God didn't call a preacher to be your friend, to be on speed dial. You call him up and tell him, you know, what you're cooking. It ain't that we don't want to be your friend. But sometimes leadership requires you to separate yourself. And it ain't personal. What did Marvin say? Don't take it personal. Because there's something brewing in the camp. And a leader that's always in people's business can't be used effectively by God. So you have to separate yourself and just watch and pray. <laughs> so God is telling them, Separate yourself among this congregation so I can consume them. See, we all need an intercessor. Because sometimes we get to acting a fool and we get to smelling ourselves, they used to say. And God be like, um, yeah, some bad thing about to happen. See, we don't believe in it. Y'all don't believe in it. Oh, we you know nothing bad, man. Why folks' lights being cut off, they stuff being reposed, they spouses acting crazy, you know, they getting sick and dying. Get out of here with that. We can't be under no curse. Okay, you can do some stuff and be cursed just like the wicked. Amen. Disobedience will curse you. You better quit tripping. Jesus learned <laughs> obedience by the things that he suffered. Disobedience will cause you to suffer, and that suffer will cause you to say, Uncle, Uncle, what can I do, Lord? I need to get out of this. He said, okay, turn around now. Repent. Stop this. Don't do that no more. If you was doing this in the first place, you never would have got here. That's because he loves you. He's bringing correction to you. You better come on here. But sometimes you have to separate yourself. Let me say this. When you give yourself to the Lord as a brand new Christian, you got to separate yourself from your friends. You tell me somebody that brought all their partners in there with them. I'm going to tell you somebody that's lukewarm, they're dead, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. You got to separate yourself. I ain't say lie, but I did. Hey, Steve, you coming to the party? I'll be there. I'll be there. Knowing good and well I wasn't coming. I didn't know at that time to tell them, hey, I'm living for Jesus. I can't do that. But I, I didn't know. But I ain't telling you to lie. 
But you got to separate from your friend that every time you see him, he got a six-pack in the back of his truck, and he wants to pop a cold one while y'all sit under the shade tree. You got to separate yourself from that person who wants to light up, even though you can be having fun and giggling behind some, some smoke or whatever, but you have to separate yourself. You got to separate yourself from that person that looking at your booty. I said it. Looking at your booty and you like it, you got to say, I can't go that way because I like it when he like it. And you know that like it going to get us in trouble. So I'm going to move on. I'm not going that way. You got to separate yourself when they call you and say, would you go out with me tonight? I'm going to show you a good time. You got to say, can't do it. Can't do it. Because this is a walk of separation. Amen. Then when God fix you and fill you, you can go back to them. And when they're acting a fool, you won't act a fool with them. Because blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Walking, nor standeth in the way with sinners. Standing, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Because when you start walking with them, amen, guess what? You're going to stand with them. Then you're going to sit with them. And in some cases, you're going to lie with them. So, blessed is the man or woman that don't walk with them. I'm not judging that, my friend, but I can't hang with old Snowball because Snowball like that Coke, and I need to get off of that Coke. That's why I personally believe when you get saved, you need to lose your nicknames. Your nickname was... Player, <laughs> hey, player, you know, yeah, that's me. Everybody say, you seen player? Yeah, he coming. You need to lose all that. <laughs> okay, y'all, y'all, I told you my three minutes is about it. So look at Moses. They fell upon their faces and said, oh, God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin and will thou be wroth with all the congregation? Oh, thank God he's merciful. That, see, one man can open up that can of sin. And so they say, Lord, just because this person sinned, will you be mad with all of us? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Barim. I'm here to tell you, you need to get away from them people that separate you from the house of God. Get away from them. Get away from them. You strong enough to take adversity. Ain't nobody said nothing to you. Ain't nobody talk about your mama. <laughs> you know, all this stuff people say. You know, you letting them tell you something. You a follower. You ain't no leader. Amen. Say, well, they did that to you. Oh, my God. Then you, well, I'm leaving too. You follower. God can't use you nowhere. Make up your mind. Everybody leave Oklahoma because it's a bad place to live. You going to leave? Get out of here. This is what happened. And the Lord said, get out of the tents of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. That means get out of those tents with those people. Get off the phone with them. Get out of their house. Get out of their cars that are speaking words to separate you from the house of God. I don't care if it's your uncle and he's taking you to the store to get your food stamps. And he got to get out of his car. Say, hey, uncle, let me off at the corner. Get out of their house, people. That are talking against God's set authority. And Moses rose up and went to Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of those wicked men. Get out of their tents. Get off of their phone. Don't touch nothing of theirs, lest you be consumed in their Amen. Get out of their house. Amen. Man, why ain't you been over? You, you may not be able to tell him, oh, man, I'm just doing something. Keep moving. So they got from the tabernacle court, Dathan and Abiram on every side. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of the tents and their wives and their sons and their children. See, when people are rebellious, it's going to affect their wives, their sons, their children, their whole family. Y'all need to get this. That's why rebellion is serious. You don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. Because it will affect our children. It will affect our wives, our sons. God, our house can be in disarray. We'll wonder why certain things. Why don't he, why don't she? Because the Lord is saying, because rebellion is so serious. So don't take it personal. 
He says, and Moses said, hereby you shall know that the Lord has sent me to all these works, for I have not done them of my own hand. If these men die, the common death of all men, or if they be visited after visitation of all men, then the Lord have not sent me. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and swallow them up with all that I pertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then you shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. So what he was saying, now when you rebel, you're putting yourself in a place to not die a common death. Come on, stay with me. This ain't no time to get off now. You can hang this long. You can hang. Now listen to me. A lot of people, I'm not the judge, but according to this word, a lot of people are dying because it's right here. They are rebelling. And they're not dying the common death. You know what the common death is? You just to go to sleep in the Lord. How many when you die, you just want to go to sleep and wake up in glory? Amen. Yes, you do. Amen. See, well, okay, I better go. That's too deep right now. You better be careful is what the Lord is saying. Because it says these men have provoked the Lord. What provokes the Lord in my life? Ask yourself. When I rebel against his teaching, his commandment, he tells me to love and I won't love. Forgive. He tells me to obey. I won't obey. He tells me to get along. I won't get along. You're putting yourself in a bad place. He tells me, uh, you and I to submit, and we won't do it. Come on. That rebellion, just because we're grown, I'm just trying to help somebody. See, death doesn't come, physical death, right away. But what will come is a spiritual death. Ask Adam and Eve. The day that you sin, you shall die. They start dying right then. Then death came into the world. When we rebel... God will say, okay, you rebel, so nothing's going to work. Your finances ain't going to work. Your health ain't going to work. I mean, all kinds of stuff because there's rebellion in, in your life. Now, there's one thing getting old and another thing, God is taking his grace back because he wants to get your attention. I didn't say God put no sickness on you. Don't lie on me. I'm saying that when you rebel, you open the door for the enemy to come in. Is that serious? Verse 31, we're about done here. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking all these words, that the ground clave under the, uh, asunder that was under them. The earth opened up her mouth and swallowed them up in their houses and all the men that appertain unto Korah and all their goods. They and all their appertain to them went down alive into the pit and the earth closed upon them and they perished among the congregation. Now you better listen to me. I mean this. I'm saying it in love. You may not like my tone. But eventually the earth will open up and will swallow us. We've got to change. Listen, listen, listen. Don't let the enemy get you now. This ain't, this ain't the time. I ain't throwing no curveballs. I'm throwing straight slow balls. When you rebel, a lot of people are going to die in their sin because they're going to rebel to the end. And the earth is going to open up and swallow them and all their stuff. They're going to lose the stuff in probate. The kids are going to fight over They ain't got but two sticks. You cannot rebel and keep being blessed. Now, I love you enough to tell you that. But this is not just to rank sinners, it's to any of us. You cannot be rebellion, the Bible says, is as a sin of witchcraft. And that's why we can say there's so much witchcraft in the earth. Because people are rebelling. I will not come up. I'm not going to come under submission. I'm not going to do what he said. I don't care if she is my wife. I'm going to stay in the streets. I don't care if he is my husband. I ain't going to submit to it. And that's the truth. I don't care if he is my mom. I ain't going to do what she say. I do what I want to. I'm an individual. I don't think that way. It's all rebellion. And the Lord don't like rebellion. And he don't like the cup of, the, the, the cup of, uh, of what people are doing, violence that's in the earth. Amen. And we need to understand that on every level. If he tell the preacher, this is what I want you to do, we got to do it. And he don't give you something else to do when you rebel. He just sit and wait. And you be like, Lord, oh, I love you. He said, like, you know, you need to go do what I told you to do. Amen. And many times in my cases, he said, you need to go say what I told you to say. But the people don't want to hear it. Say it anyway. Amen. If they kill you, say it. 
He tell you to do things in your personal life, and you ain't going to do it. I'm telling you, we got a Holy Ghost that walks with us. He tell you, stop, stop, don't do that. And you, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm grown. God loves me. He said, okay. The earth going to open up and swallow you. Situations will swallow you. You'll be up to your neck in discouragement and confusion. And say, it's better that I die or take my life. Simply because of rebellion. He says obedience is better than sacrifice. So all these people talking about how free they are and they ain't disobeying God. So what? You grown and you can, you be, how long you going to enjoy sin? You done it long enough. You got a daggone PhD in sinning. How long? How long will you halt between two opinions? If the Lord be God, then serve him. And then serve him with all your heart. Become his slave. And black folks don't want to hear that. I ain't slave to nothing. But you got to become his slave. I'm finishing up here. And then he says here, uh, uh, let's, go, let's go down to the end here. He says, it's a lot in there. You need to read it. Verse 29, he said, if these men die the common death of all men, for if they have been visited with the visitation of all men, God can make it so you don't die a common death. Let's run on. Verse 31, it came to pass that he made an end. Uh, the earth opened up on them, and their house fell. Okay, verse 35. There came out fire from the Lord and consumed those 250 men that offered incense. They was anointed. A lot of people who are anointed are being consumed. Oh, man, good Lord, help me, Holy Ghost. Being consumed. Anointed, but can't be moral. And now the women are coming into the ministry. And the devil is attracted by their anointing. And so because they're rebellious and they don't have an overseer or somebody watching over them of a group of people, they're dealing with the same thing that men had to deal with all these years in, in the ministry. Man single and, you know, all the babies, ladies want to walk with him. Woman single, men know that. They want to they corral that. They want to control that virtue. Are you saved? And when you get rebellious, the enemy start whispering in your ear about you all that and a bag of chips. And then the earth's going to open up and swallow you because the Lord will back up off of that. And he didn't bring you to this message today for you to play pity pack with it too. You ain't got to like this preacher, but the word is true. And the Bible says in verse 36, and the Lord spake unto Moses saying, speaking to Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest, that he take up the censers in the burning and scatter uh, them for their hollow. Now what happened here? After the earth opened up and swallowed them, the Lord took their censers and had them to put them around the altar so that everybody else would fear that if you're going to walk with God, Christian, stop rebelling because you can lose your anointing. You can't sing no more. You can't preach no more because of rebellion. And he put it on the altar for everybody else to see because God elects saying, I don't play. You can stomp and, 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 and slam the doors going out of church or whatever and take half the congregation with you. Don't mean God went with you. It's in the Bible. Go back to church. Whatever city you're in, go back to church. There's some church on some corner that's good enough for you. It don't have to be the same church, same color you got either. Go to church. Go to the Oriental Church if you don't think African American churches are no good. But go to church Amen. every Sunday. Amen. Amen. All right, we're done. So, 15,000 people got killed because what happened was those 250 got killed. The earth opened up. I'm going to let you read it later because it's good. I can stay with it. But 15,000 people died, Pastor, simply because of one or two, three people's rebellion. That's the problem with rebellion. That we all got a little rebel in us. And if the right person touches, we like, give me a ticket torch too. Let's burn this sucker down. Then after it's over, all of us, what did I do? Did I do that? Yeah. But God don't like rebellion. Amen. That's why he called us sheep. Ain't no way he ever called us lions. Yeah. He called us sheep. 
And he's transforming us into what sheep are through his true shepherds. Amen. Amen. Who love us enough to die for us. You want to be promoted in God? If you're part of a group, start getting on your face praying about that group. Amen. You're in the choir? Get on your face and pray about it. Don't just practice your singing. Get on your face and pray about it. Oh, Lord, the choir's, choir ain't, ain't, ain't hot as it's supposed to be. Oh, 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 God, oh, God. Get on your face. God will do something. Amen. Marriage ain't right. Get on your face. Oh, God, the marriage ain't right. There's some things. Blah, 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 blah. God will do something. Amen. Tired of being walked on? All these men just want you for one thing? Get on your face. Oh, God, I'm tired of being in the trash can for these men. To help me. God will do something. Got a habit you can't break? You done been everywhere, 12-step program, threw the cigarettes down, threw the, uh, the drugs down, but you keep picking them up, threw Billy down, you pick him back up, threw Sally down, and you can't, i tell you what you do, get on your face, oh God, I can't, I can't seem to get off of this, get off of that, and this is killing me, help me Jesus. God, see that, because when you humble yourself, God will exalt you in due time. And when you get on your face and tell God, I can't do it. I'm tired of this habit. Amen. That's what salvation is. Coming to the place. Oh, God, I can't do it. Not, oh, I can. You know you can't. If you want to be saved today, that's what it takes. A humble heart. That, Lord, I need you. Just like I do. I couldn't do what I do without him. Amen. Ain't no skill to it. It's obedience. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Let's pray. Because the only reason God put this in the word, because he knew people was going to come in 2022, and they're going to be rebels. We live in a rebellion.